In this episode, I'm going to cover alert dialogues with Flutter. I'll start by displaying a dialog and I'll cover three different types of construction and uses. And then I'll be talking about how I listen for input in those three different types of dialogues. Okay, so to get going, I have a bare bones application already created in an in Android Studio. And what I have down here is uh, handle pressed. And that handle press gets called when I tap on the delete up here. So what I want to do is display, are you sure yes or no when I click on delete? I want a dialog to show up, which will be something in the middle here or center. And so how would I do that? Well, I've already pre-constructed this. So I want to cover this real quick. I don't need to, to write it out verbosely in this tutorial, I think, but I'll leave the code in a gist below in the video description as well, so you can copy it as well. Okay, so what I want to do is paste that, the first definition, and I've pasted it in, and I've got to import the future here, import li the lib for future. And what, let me explain, it's a future wrapper with a Boolean return. So, and I don't have async because it's returned, the show dialog returns. Let's see what show log re returns. Okay, it returns a generic type. Okay, so then let's go back to main. And then we give it the context, or I'm giving it the context because basically I'm creating a method here that I can, or a function in this case, because it's outside my class. And I can use this function anywhere in my application per se. Okay, so this constructs a show dialog future, and I give it the context of my application where I show it from, and then I say it's it has to be tapped on here. User must tap on button, and then I return a widget in the builder. It used to be used to be said you say uh, give it as a child, but that's now deprecated, and so now I use a builder to construct my widget, which provides the context, and then. This alert dialog is, I'll show you in a second what it looks like, is given a title of, of, okay, so a text, are you sure? Are you sure you want to delete this maybe? I'm just giving, and then some of the actions are gonna be a flat button, yes, or a flat button, no. And then I'll talk about this navigator context pop, and it says, okay, I'm gonna return a value of true for yes and a value of false for no. And so, that basically returns the future value of Boolean. So let me look at how that's gonna be wired. So let me wire that up. So I wanna call it, I'm gonna go confirmation on handle. Uh, when this is pressed, okay, confirm dialog one, and I'm gonna provide the context of my widget or page here. And then I'm just gonna use the then, and it's gonna return a Boolean value. So I'm gonna go bool and uh, value that it returns and I could do an inline function here but I'll just do a function body to make it a little verbose for this tutorial and then I'll type print let's say value is and I'll say value and so I can recognize it in the console let me give it some unique characters okay and then I'll show the console down here just to make sure okay so then I have on press, confirm dialog, this is gonna press and it's gonna show, and when that button is pressed, it's gonna navigate, use the navigator to pop with a return value. Okay, so let me just hit hot reload up here, and I'm gonna press on delete. Okay, are you sure? I'm gonna press on yes, and let's just see if that printed the value of true. It did, also, okay, excellent, so I'm gonna run it. Oh, I didn't have to hit hot reload. So I'm gonna press on it again, I'm gonna press on no this time. Let me look at the tail here and it pressed as false. Well, what if I re wanted to return a more complex object? Well, let me show you that. So I've got another construction that I'll copy and paste in. And in this case, I use a map. And so what I'll do is go down and I'll paste in confirm dialog two. And so let me look at that confirm dialog two. And here, the same construction as the first time, but in this case, the return value is gonna be a, a map and it's going to be string and dynamic okay so these values are dynamic and then what i do is i provide that value i send it back with the future here then i specify a map as the return value okay so then i use the navigator to send that back okay so let's 
So let me change that to two. And now it's going to be a map of that. The map is going to be a value that is returned. So I'm going to change that, that type here. And this is going to return a map. So it'll print up map. So let me just hot reload that. And then I'm going to press on delete over here. Are you sure? Yes. Let's look at the debug console. Scroll to the tail. And there's my map. Brandon and the value is true. So that's excellent. Let me just try that again. Value is no. Okay. So, okay. So there it is. Value is false. So that's excellent. So there's one other way I like to construct things and that might be using a type depth. Now this is a little bit mo more outside the box and probably depends on your preference, but I'll show you it anyways, because I thought this might be a unique way to, sh to provide return values. Okay, so this confirm dialog, I'm returning a null value in this case. I'm not returning, as you can see, the navigator of context pop. But in this case, after it's returned, I could say on yes, or before it's returned, I could say on yes. Uh, and on no, what is that? You could see it's a function definition or like a type def. It's providing, I want a function to be provided so I can call it to return it. I could return a value in this function as well by simply saying map value here and I could return that map. Okay, so how would that be constructed? So let me go switch the, the, the handle press dialog um, build here. So now I don't, need, I don't have a return so I could say uh, this is going to be null, so let me just put underscore for null. And the context, I have a problem here, so let me just return this. Okay, print, done. Okay, and then I need to provide with a couple functions here. And so I could go var uh, on yes is going to be anonymous function. And let's say that on yes, I'm going to say uh, on yes and then terminate that. So then I could provide it with on yes. And then on no, I could do the same thing. Let me just copy that and go on no. So I'm creating a couple anonymous functions with a variable name here. And then I'd say on no. So I'm passing these functions into my dialog. So let me just press that. Let me just add some uh, tildes there so I could see it in the display outside of the other context a little easier. And so what I want to do is I've, I'll hot reload it and then I'll press on delete here and press on, on yes. So I'll check the tail and there it is. The function on yes was called. And so I'll press delete again and press no. And there it is uh, done. And then on yes was called on yes was called. So that basically concludes how I could construct a dialog easily within a Flutter application. So thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter, and I'll catch you later.